for my oscilloscope project I of course need a sawtooth generator. The function of that generator in case of an oscilloscope is to move the dot on the screen from the left to the right or the right to the left. So I wanted to search for a good circuit about a sawtooth generator and I found um, two sources. This is the first source. You can find it on the website of worldradiohistory.com and uh, perhaps you can think well what to do with such a uh, sawtooth generator. And I also find, found about that a very interesting article in this book. Here are my sources. That is the Radio Engineering Handbook, chapter 1555, page 790. And it was issued um, by the McCraw Hill Book Company, New York, Toronto, London in 1959. So, what to do first? Um, perhaps discuss first the schematic. I have two computers here now. This is the schematic. And I have also made myself a drawing and I will show that drawing will give more information, etc. This circuit was made for approximately 15 volts. I wanted to make it for 40 volts. It's only a first experiment, say, to find a kind of way to make a more or less simple and good working solder generator for the oscilloscope. Uh, well, I want to pen over the article first. This is the schematic, an NPN transistor and a PNP transistor. I've used the BD139 and the BD140 because they can work on 80 volts maximum. Here are the... Uh, there's more information about the components that were used. And of course you can find that article yourself on worldradiohistory.com in the book that I mentioned. Here are more important things to read before you make it. Component changes, I did some minor component changes. Modifications, I did not a modification on this circuit. Here are the sources for further reading. Here are the modifications. This is a modification. And this. And this. And I will show that the circuit really works. The linearity is perhaps a kind of problem. And you can also see that here that here, say, this part of the wave is a little bit rounded, it's not uh, pure straight, could be a problem, but I want to keep the um, oscilloscope as simple as possible. Well, what to do with um, a sawtooth generator? And here is that very, very interesting information of the Radio Engineering Handbook of 1959. It was the fifth edition. You can also find that on worldradiohistory.com. I will slowly skim the circuit so that it is possible to read it. And here are the most important and most interesting things, at least uh, when we are talking about the use of such a sawtooth generator. That sawtooth generator is here, of course, made with a tube, a few tubes in 1959. And these are the mo most important things, in my opinion. Um, when you send in a, a proper um, square... Nee, 
a proper sawtooth wave. In my case it is a little bit not linear here, the slope, but anyway, when you send it in, here are some conclusions uh, into an audio amplifier, here are conclusions uh, about the properties of the audio amplifier that you can take when you connect the oscilloscope parallel to the loudspeaker. Overload, this waveform, ringing, the tops of the of the sawtooth wave, rated load, I think that is no, the normal situation, I don't uh, don't understand that exactly, but anyway. So here you can read the text, sorry for some trembling, I have to hold the camera in my hands, there will surely be certain moments when you can read this text and you can of course also go to worldradiohistory.com. Here also uh, effects of distortion, not distortion, well in a certain way also distortion, it's about boost of higher and lower frequencies. These waveforms can give an indication about uh, the boost or the not boost of higher and lower um, frequencies in your audio amplifier. That was all. Let's go to the, the circuit, how it was made. So, again my, my schematic. I hope it's vis visible from this distance. I did some tests. It's in fact the same circuit from the book. Here is how I made it. I've used a 470k potentiometer. potentiometer. I've used a BD139 NPN, BD140 PNP. I uh, did some experiments with different resistors. You can uh, connect here parallel a tiny capacitor, 50 picofarad to 100 picofarad. Changing the ratio between R3 and R2 um, alters the voltage to which the, the uh, capacitor charges. I've done that, I've altered that. And here is the circuit. And it's now operating on 40 volts. This is the waveform. And we are now on the uh, highest value capacitor. That is at this moment 2.2 .2, uh, microfarad, and the potentiometer is to to a position where the circuit gives out 43 hertz. Let's see what it can bring when we do some changes. So here's the lowest frequency that it can give now at the moment. That's a prog I think it's one hertz or it is lower than one hertz. I put the camera down for a while. I have to use two hands. I now go to a capacitor of 470 nanofarads. We are now on 4.6 hertz. You can see that the wave is built up in a shorter time. And this is the maximum that which this uh, capacitor can be reached. 194 hertz. Uh, a following capacitor, let's say use 10 nanofarads. That's this one. Yeah, 10 nanofarad, we are on 10.5 kilohertz waveform. Looks quite good, though here is a kind of moment where there is, say, when it is not directly built up the wave. So a 
tiny moment and perhaps it will give a problem when I use it with the oscilloscope but there are many say uh, modes to repair that because this part this part of the wave here will drive the transistor or the tube in my case I think a transistor that will drive the dot of the uh, on the oscilloscope screen here from this part to that part and because this is somewhat rounded it could be that say certain waveforms say for instance sine wave is lengthened out somewhat because this is not completely linear here anyway it doesn't have to be a big problem because I want to keep the oscilloscope as simple as possible uh, we now go to 100 nanofarad that is 0 0.1 microfarad 860 hertz the waveform and what is the highest of the lowest possibility with 100 nanofarad well that's a good value interesting value though the linearity the quali quality of the linearity is not very good anyway 20 hertz is the waveform and finally the highest capacitor that is 1N5 that is 1500 picofarad let's look no I do 4N7 4700 picofarad 427 hertz waveform uh, lowest frequency sorry highest frequency is here 15 kilohertz so here's a table with the results of my experiments you can also keep it here completely open so do not use a capacitor here then the circuit also oscillates. Quite strange. I don't know where the capacitance is. Perhaps somewhere here in, the, in this part of the circuit. There must be capacitance between the two um, transistors. Anyway, I've tried to make the um, waveform more linear. This can help a little bit to make it more linear. Small capacitor of 50 picofarad to 100 picofarad between these two points that is the collector of the BD139 and the base of the BD140 that's here anyway this, this was more or less all to tell uh, perhaps interesting to show the situation when there is no capacitor at all so when these points are open these, uh, then we are on 94 kilohertz of course the waveform is no longer a sawtooth wave say there's a I mean it's a sawtooth but there's more time here thanks for watching I only have one minute and well that was all it starts to work on 6 volts and I will perhaps make it with perhaps a high voltage um, transistors to make it work on 150 volts I'm not sure I will also try to make a sawtooth generator with a neon tube. That will be another experiment, but this is a useful circuit I think.